Hey, what is up everybody? It is Tackle Talk Tuesday, Tuesday night, and man, am I glad to be home. It's been a long weekend. I greatly enjoyed everything at the Catfish Conference this weekend, and I hope that you all did as well. Uh, for everybody, uh, the people that I've met, and the people that uh, come to shake my hand and say hi and congratulate me and just tell me how much they enjoyed the show, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, for anybody that this may be your first time on the show, I want to welcome you. Uh, this is a live show that we do to teach everybody as much information as we possibly can. It's called Tackle Talk Tuesday, so make sure you're leaving your questions in the comments. Uh, that's where we get our. That's where I get my ideas from. I want to make sure that you guys are learning everything you possibly can about what you want to learn about. So let's see here. Let me get the chat popped up here. I think tonight might be a very uh, question-based, uh, you know, show. And if I can figure out how to do this. All right, here we go. So tonight uh, has been a long-awaited. Um, many and many of you guys have... You know, ask me about planter boards, ask me about what boards I use, um, how I set them up, um, how I use them, and, you know, just things of that nature. So I'll probably do a two show on this just because I didn't get a chance to go back and look at all the questions that you guys had previous. So I do apologize for that, but it's been a very, very, very busy, um, you know, last, last few days. And I am extremely extremely worn out from it and i hope you guys are as well uh make sure let me know uh, i had a question from ron presley today and i have been blessed enough to be at all four of the catfish conferences and he asked me a few questions that i thought were very interesting um you know he asked me what the people that you know come to talk to me or come to the booths that i was working you know what they wanted the most so my question to you guys is, and I want to be able to refer, you know, give him this information. In the comments, tell me what you guys like the most about the conference. Tell me what you guys would like to see better next year. Um, if you've seen something that you didn't didn't enjoy or you didn't like, you know, put those in the comments, um, and I can I can transfer that information to those to those people and maybe help make this thing better because the viewers and the people there, that's what it's about. So if we can make it better for you guys, then, you know, I, and I'm by no means uh, affiliated with it more so than just, you know, want to give information from the people that are, that make it happen. The viewers, the customers give that information to the people that are able to put it on and maybe make it even better next year. So tonight uh, we are talking about planner boards and for anybody that doesn't know, let's see if I can get that in there good. I use and love offshore tackle planter boards. And as you can see, I mean, this thing has seen a lot of water, okay? Now, uh, to start with, you know, planter boards are a good thing to be able to get, you know, your baits spread out farther away from the boat, okay? Planter boards are used um, a lot of times in lakes, but as catfishing evolves and as you know, cat fishermen evolve, uh, we are able to you know, use different. You know, <laughs> Jeremy Chase, quit it, quit it. Uh, but uh, as you know, as catfishing evolves and the cat fishermen evolve, you know, we got to learn how to do dif different things. We got to com you know continually press the boundaries of how we catch these fish, how we find them, and how we chase them, okay? That's how we're going to continue to, to better ourselves and better this sport uh, throughout a whole. Um, so, yes, Mike, I can in just a minute. So, you know, as I was saying, you know, planter boards have been used for years at like places like um, Lake Tawakany or Santee Cooper, uh, striper guides, striper fishermen, you know, 
uh, crop, even crappie guys have been using planter boards for, for many, many years. And some, uh, some cat fishermen, some of the old school cat fishermen in the river sections at Fish River have used them for many years, but they just didn't let the secret out, you know? And then several years ago, a lot of people started, you know, wondering, you know, once again, pressing the boundaries of how to catch these fish. But, you know, cat fishermen around me, like a river guy, I got the ideas for using these boards from traveling to places like Willer and Santee, uh, you know, in these lakes and dragging baits, okay? So, most of you know, you know, how to drag baits with them. And this is a smaller, so I use two primary offshore boards. This is, this is an SST or Pro Mag board, okay? And I'll, I will show you kind of how I set, set them up and, uh, you know, the things that I do different than maybe a few others. And I'll tell you why in here in just a minute. And this is a OR12. You can see the difference in size, okay? You know, drastic amount of difference, even in the, you can see the difference in thickness. Huge difference um, between the two. And, you know, for dragging baits, uh, whether it be for channel catch, you guys have seen some of these in the channel cat videos that I've done, or even dragging, uh, you know, big baits for like Lake Willer, places like that, where if it's not windy, um, maybe I don't need them to go out real far, I'll use these, okay? They're just a smaller board, more, you know, compact. Uh, now, one thing I will say about these boards, they're super, super, I mean, durable. You know, I've had these boards for, uh, well, this exact set, let's see. I've used this one here for, this one I've had for two years, and I think this one I've had for about a year. So, you know, they're super durable. Um, the things, you know, you can, you can see how they just, everything just springs back. Uh, hard plastic, they got lead in the bottom of them. Okay, that's the bottom that kind of helps helps balance it. Now something, something I like about this, you see that screw right there, you can actually, change the location of this weight to help you know balance it out okay and something else i like about it is you can actually change where where you put the location of either your back clip or in this case a pigtail okay a lot of a lot of different things you can do with these boards and and uh you know a lot of, a lot of information to cover um you know that's the reason i said i don't think i'll be able to cover all the questions and all of you know the information with these in one in one show okay so so that's a little back history on where they come from you know come from lakes and and striper fishing uh, that kind of nature you know as cat fishermen river cat fishermen we've kind of evolved in using this these as well you know when uh, when the lakes or when the rivers turn into basically lakes you know in the summertime there's a lot of times you will actually you know, a high river will turn into basically a lake, you know, and it, no current is hard fishing for blue cats or flatheads, in my opinion. Uh, extremely hard for flatheads, but that's where these come into play. You can use these a lot of times, just like you would in a lake, dragging baits or drifting baits in that river system. Um, now, nuts, a couple other things that we've been able to evolve and start using and I can't wait till summertime where I can actually put these techniques, all this information that, that I'm sharing with you guys through these Tackle Talk Tuesdays, I will be able to share this information in video form and I can't wait. I wish I could do it now, uh, but unfortunately I can't due to the river and weather conditions. But summertime, we're gonna be able to put a lot of this information and you guys will be able to you know come back and reference what I'm saying, see what I'm saying, in video form and see how it works. So, <clears throat> Jeremy, Jeremy Chase, chasing, chasing the outdoors. You're funny, buddy. You're funny. Anyway, um, so another technique or another form of way that you know river fishermen have been able to evolve with this drifting. Uh, most of us know Steve Douglas for dead sticking. Uh, Steve is notorious for knowing how to just straight drift down the river, um, you know, poles hanging 
out catching blue cats, right? Well, in a river, if we have current, let's say we have 0.7 tenths or a mile an hour or even up to a mile and a half or two mile an hour current, you can use these boards with as, as if you would dead sticking, okay? And it's the same as, you know, you was dead sticking off the boat, but now we're being able to cover, you know, so much more area. You're able to cover a hundred foot swipe at one time, more so than just whatever your boat and rods can cover going down through. Uh, so, you know, whenever we get we get into that, you know, that's a, I want you guys to be able to put those questions down so I can, I can answer them. Uh, there's a lot of things going through the chat right now. So, Let's break, uh, let's, let's break this down a little bit. So whenever you order an offshore planter board like this, okay, it's going to come with the, let me find my notes here. It's going to come with the OR18 snapped, okay, so you guys can see that. So this would be bolted, this is the part that is bolted to the planter board. Okay. Now, the good thing about this snap is, as you can see, the line goes right in here, okay? Now, you can do two different things with this. This can be a permanent snap where the planter board won't come off, which is like this. So the line stays in there, and you actually have to unlock it before the line will come out, okay? Now, you can flip it back like that, and the line will pop out just like a, a traditional planter board. So some other things, a lot of things that I like about all of the offshore you know, tackle stuff is, is a lot of it is adjustable. So you can adjust with a small screwdriver the tension that these put on, you know, on your line so that it makes it easier to snap and unsnap, you know? So if you've got line that's more, maybe you're, maybe you're the type of guy that uses a 30 pound line, <clears throat> obviously you would want that to snap down farther than like so myself that uses 50 pound line. So you wanna be able to adjust that to where that line will be able to pull, you know, pull out good, you know, good and easy. So that is, that's the original uh, clip that comes on it whenever you order the board itself. Now, another really nice clip is, this is a OR39, okay? And this is another adjustable clip. And, and they make so many different clips and you just, it's more of a personal preference. And I'll go, I'll go into exactly how I have my board set up and, and kind of why I like that. But this is another, another good clip that, you know, is super simple line goes in there you shut it and like the other clip it's you can adjust the tension on it and it makes it so nice you know that way i mean you know sometimes a lot of times those fish will just come up and grab a piece of bait and pull it down slow and then start to feel something and let it go by you know on days like that you can adjust you know adjust that to where it trips easier if those fish are really biting soft and uh, you know, be able to use them, you know, be able to catch them, and they won't feel that planter board coming down. Okay, that's an OR 30, 39. Now, I'll just go through these clips here real quick. Uh, this is a OR seventeen. Okay, this is a bigger, kind of a a bigger jawed, fatter. It's not as you can see the spring inside of it. Okay, now this is a set tension. Okay, it doesn't, you can't adjust it. Um, it doesn't, it's kind of like a medium tension. It's not real heavy. I do like these. No nip on the inside. Good soft pads that grip the, grip the line. These are good clips. Um, here's an OR16. Now this is, this is the, the clip that I use. Okay, now if you can see inside there, that spring will actually move uh, back and forth. Let me see if I can find. 
something here. I don't know if this will be strong enough or not. No, nope. nope, that's not strong enough. But anyway, that, that tension will move forward and back inside there if you want more tension or less tension, okay? Now on the inside, let's see if you guys can see that. There's a nipple on, on the very inside, okay? Now depending on what you're doing and whether you want that line to be tripped out of that or whether you want it to be stay in there and not get tripped, say you don't... You're in a real snaggy area and you know you're going to hang up and break up quite a bit and you don't want to have to go chasing your boards down all the time then you can put it behind that and as long as the line breaks below the planter board you can always reel that planter board back in and you never have to go chase it or you can put that line you know directly in front of that and it will trip just the same as any other you know would have so that is a um, OR16. Now, here is another. Uh, this is orange. Now, OR16 is red. You can see. <clears throat> and here is the orange. Now, this is the OR19. Now, this is kind of uh, same as the other one, except for, uh, so we got the, as you guys can see in there, the spring that you can move back and forth. It doesn't have nearly the tension as that other one. And also on the inside, you can see there is no, there's no nipple. Okay. Get that close up there. So, so, you know, you can't, I use this one on the OR12 planter boards, this, uh, this small one. Okay. And I'll get to, um, I'm usually in a lake when I'm using that board and I don't, you know, I won't have to worry about going back and chasing the, chasing the board down if it does break off because I'm in a lake. So there's the different, uh, the different, you know, clips that I use. Okay. Now, uh, before we get too long, um, something, a good little tip for you guys that uh, if you're planning on getting some planter boards and you're going to get different clips and different, uh, different things to, you know, try out, with the planter boards is just go ahead and get you a little you know just one of the little tackle boxes plano boxes and put everything in it okay that way everything is nice you know right to uh what you need and i got all my extra clips uh my rings here's my extra pigtails if i can get one out of there extra pigtails And also, uh, something that you'll, you know, if you go to get some of this stuff, you'll want to get some extra uh, bolts just in case that stuff does come out. It, it will get loose over time, you know, beating around. And then what I normally do is I got extra weights in here in case, you know, I lose one. A wrench, you know, to work on one, work on stuff. And then a small screwdriver, you know, to be able to take that stuff apart. So, uh get you some extra rings. These are kind of like the pads that go in between the jaws. Like specifically, you know, I use this red, this red one 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, you know, because I'm mainly fishing river. So the pads inside here will actually, you know, get wore out from the line coming in and out. So every once in a while you'll have to just replace the pads so that you, you don't get down into the hard plastic. So that is kind of uh, an overview of the snaps and the extra parts that I use. Um, let's start with the the R12. So let me see the small one. So and also there's links uh, in the description to all this stuff. So if you have any questions about whether you want you know you want to buy one or you don't want to buy one, all my links are you know to the direct ones that I actually use, okay? And I'll, as always, if you have any questions, you know, make sure that you, you know, just just hit them up in the comments. And, you know, <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna answer every single one of them. So anyway, this is the small one, okay? That's the orange clip that I was telling you, oops, wrong side. 
That's the orange clip that I was telling you I use. And now, whenever you get them, uh, you can put whatever clip you want on it, okay? Um, I choose to put the orange, the orange clips. That's OR19, okay? Now, if you see how this is stretched out here, you know, a lot of people uh, wonder how they can get uh, more pull out of their boards. You can actually get more pull by shortening this up, okay, and making that steeper, steeper of an angle. Okay, the, the less it has, the less they're going to pull. Now, one thing I also want you to notice is... It says right okay there's a left and there's a right you know for instance this is a, a right but whenever it's in a boat it'd be you know to be on your left hand side so it'd be pulling this direction and let's see here that's a right uh, I got three rights in here I should have brought a left oh well so that gives you an idea of how uh, that's gonna go and make sure you get a left and a right as a pair okay so let's talk about you know how it how hard it is to put them on a lot of people ask me how hard it is to put them on so you set your you know you throw your cast your rod out you get it as far out as you want. Like me personally, I'll throw it out and I will set them at different lengths uh, behind the boat and behind the planer board, okay? You know, I may let one go way back um, 150, uh, 200 foot behind before I put the planer board out, or I may just throw it out and let it hit the bottom and just barely let it drag, you know, behind the planer board. So with these pigtails that I use on these planer boards, you can see it's just got a a bent, it's basically just like a bent swivel, uh, but it's called a pigtail. So you'll make a little tiny loop. Let me get just a little closer here. You make a little tiny loop just like that. And you'll hook it. You can kind of see right there, you'll hook that, and it's it's on there. Okay. So now depending on which way which way it's going to pull. Now this is a right. So this would be going down to your bait. And this would be towards you or towards the toward the boat. And you know, all you do is just push that open, set it down in. Now, depending on um, how hard you want the fish to hit or take the bait will depend on how far you put this back in there. Okay. If you put it back in there farther, the harder it is for them to pull out. If you just I like to just barely put it in the tip. You guys can see there. Just about a quarter of the way in. That way when that fish comes through there and hits it, you know, it snaps loose. Now, comes the reason why I like to use these pigtails, okay? Now, once that fish takes that bait and you're fighting the fish, this planter board is just going to slide in that pigtail. Okay, it's just going to float on top of the water, or it might go underwater a little bit, but it's basically you're fighting the fish and not the planter board. Now, as you fight that, fight that fish back up in, you don't have to worry about this planter board getting in the way. Uh, the pigtail will actually, the pigtails that they sell, you can see it stops right there at the sinker slide. Okay, now. I don't have no issues with this board coming down here like this, okay? Because by that time, uh, that fish is right there at the boat, and I can just net the fish, the planter board, and everything all together. And then, then I worry about getting this off. And it's as simple as putting it back on as you, as you did, or taking it off as you did putting it on. You just grab grab the lines, pinch them together, and it comes straight off, okay? Doesn't hurt your line, doesn't bother anything. Now, like I was saying, this is the board that I mainly use in small lakes, small reservoirs, 
you know, going after channel cats and and uh, small fish. Um, I have I do use this at places like Willer, as long as I don't have to drag much over, you know, two ounces, three ounces. Um, I want my I want the board to be able to pull out good, and if I'm dragging, you know, heavy weights, it's going to be harder, you know, with heavy weights and a big old piece of bait, it's going to be harder for you to be able to, to for that board to be able to pull that thing out away from the boat like it should. Now, uh, when we talk about the SST, the mag board, this is the one that I use a lot, okay? Now, this is a brand new board. Um, this is how it come to me, you know, in the package. You can see everything's, uh, you know, factory the way it is, okay? Now, I do a couple a couple different things, and, and everybody's different. You know, that's, that's the glory of it. You can... Uh, it comes with a flag and you can actually get like a, what they call a tattletale flag where you know as you get as you get a hit this will pop up you know if you're if you're getting uh, light hits or it's real windy stuff like that you know uh, there's different different a variety of different things you can do with these but the couple of things that I do and I'll hold these both up so you can notice them is you see all I do is whenever a board comes to me like this is I will order a pack of a pack of uh, pigtails, okay? And you they'll come with the ring and the you know the pigtail and everything you need. So order a pack of them with my planter boards, and I'll take my my clip, the red clip off the back, and I will mount it on the front, okay? Just like that. Now. And then I put a pigtail right there on the back. And that's how I like it, okay? Now I have a board that I can either, you know, put it behind the nipple if I don't want the board to pop loose, or if I want the board to pop loose, I can put it in front of that nipple and, you know, let it free. So let me, let me show you guys that real quick. So let's put that back on. Now remember, uh, whenever you're you're putting that on, you just make a little small loop, just like that. Now I'm gonna put it behind the nipple so that you guys can see. Okay. Now, no matter what, no matter how hard I pull, that will not come out from behind that. Okay. But if I put it just a quarter in, like I did before, in front of that nipple, as you can see, whenever I pull the, you know, whenever a fish comes and hits it or takes the bait, that will pop loose. And once again, the board is just gonna slide, okay? Now, I know everybody doesn't use braid or use uh, mono, so I brought in some braid too to kind of show you guys what to do. I did get some new line. You know, there was so much stuff at the cat at the uh, uh, catfish conference this weekend, but I did get some new line to try. I kind of like it. I'm, I use uh, I usually use Power Pro for my bumping rods, but that's yellow. That's uh, Cast King Cast Pro. Uh, this is, it's 80 pounds, comes in 300 yard spools. So I'm kind of eager to try it. If anybody out there has tried this, uh, tell me what you guys think of it in the comments. Um, the company's been around for a little bit, but I don't know much about them, but you know, I liked it. It's really smooth. It's not uh, a real heavy braid, you know, like you can't feel the braid, the wraps in it real bad. So I kind of like that. But anyway, so if you, if you're a braid guy, okay, let me see. Something you're going to want to do is, is make a loop. Okay, make a, so this the braid will kind of slip 
in that. So you want to make a loop. I need another hand. I got my toes working and everything. So there you go. So you'll make a loop, and I don't use braid that much. That way it won't slip, okay? No matter how hard you pull, it won't the, the fish won't be able to slip it, but it'll pop out, okay? So for you guys that do use braid, that's a, a little trick for you. Uh, let's see. So that is kind of a a quick rundown of uh, planer boards. Oh, Mike. Mike Lewis has been asking me and asking me and asking me and asking me um, how much weight will they hold up, okay? And kind of how I do it. So uh, this is, this are, these are the, you know, sinker slides I use. Go down there, okay? And I, I love these because I can change the weights. Uh, but these, these boards here, you know, with a regular... Whenever I am like dead sticking down the river, I got a mile and a half of current. I will put these out and use these kind of as to spread my baits out um, as if I'm dead sticking. Okay, so what I do is I will drop my lines down just like I would put them on the boat, set my depth to where I want it. I will hook the board to it. Okay, and whenever you hook the board to it now, your bait is set below that board at whatever depth you want. And you can let that board go out. And as the as long as you are going slower than the current, it will go out and pull out beside the boat. And you can length or width of your baits, you know, a lot, lot better. Okay. But he was wanting to know how much weight could those clips and this board hold up. I regularly use eight to ten ounces. Okay, and that's with a big piece of bait. Now these boards are going to set a little bit low in the back and high in the front. Don't worry about that, okay? This is the exact board that I use to do what I just was talking about. If it is setting just like this, it's going to pull out just as hard as if it's setting like this. It actually will pull out a little bit harder, okay? And obviously, the more current or the faster you're going, it will you know, pull out harder. Now I seen a question uh, just run by from Tackling Cats. He asks, uh, do I ever pick up flatheads using planter boards? And absolutely. Whenever you are in the, in the summertime, low current, uh, I like to find long flats with scattered brush on them. And I will set my depths, you know, just like I was talking, okay? And I will pull if there's very little current, I will pull into the current, okay? And just go real slow and let them baits hover just above that wood. And whenever I say slow, I'm talking, uh, if I'm doing that, I'm talking like 0.3, okay? And I'll do it with live bait and cut bait. And you would be amazed at how far up in the water column uh, those flatheads will come to get those, get those baits. Uh, now, if I am... In the lake, I will drag, you know, anywhere between 0.5 to 1, you know, 1 mile an hour. Um, you know, don't be afraid to go go 1 mile an hour. Now, one thing, one other thing I'd like to touch on is if it's windy. You know, if it's real choppy and real windy, you know, even if you're dragging in a lake, you may have to pick up the bigger board just so you can, you know, just so it go through, depending on the size of waves that you got okay um, and that's another thing whenever you're, if you're dragging in in real wavy or choppy conditions that's where I like to throw my lines out and let them go way back behind the boat maybe 200 plus feet if I can that way there's not a there's not a lot of jerkiness in the bait okay it's kind of long and maybe you know draw it's just a, a slower pull than not jerkiness that helps out a lot too so now, uh, for the giveaway, um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. 
Let's see here. I got a little care package for somebody that can, the first person um, that, let's see here. I'm gonna find something, okay. There was enough videos out on Facebook and everything else. There was a rod company that had a fishing simulator at the catfish conference. First person to name that gets the care package from Offshore Tackle. Wow, you guys are really typing quick. I believe it was Shane Howell. How L Howell? However you pronounce your last name. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, get a hold of me through Messenger and I will give me your address and I will get that care package shipped out to you, buddy. Um, so to end tonight, if you have any questions about this, make sure uh, you're leaving them in the comments. I'm going to get to the questions on today's show. And if I have enough, then I will do another show on this. Or if you guys would like to see more in depth about any part of planter boards, make sure you leave it in the comments. Um, I don't mind uh, doing another show on this. Uh, but let's see. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight and watching and sticking with me. Uh, once again, let's do another trivia giveaway for us three packs of whisker sticks. All right. Hey, now this is something I can get into. Um, let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Where did you go? Where did you go? All right. Uh, whisker sticks fishing. He's going to do, he says, Chris, let's do another trivia giveaway for us. Uh, or from us, three packs of whisker sticks. Uh, thank you. Uh, first off, uh, guys, give him uh, give him some love. Um, that is absolutely awesome. Um, so let's see here. Another question. Ah. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. I'm trying to think of a question. Kind of stumped me. Well, how about we do... I'm going to cover it up. What's the name of this planter board? This is the big one. First one that says it. Gets three packs of... Uh, three packs of... From whisker sticks. Trey Stoop. I see it. Let me go back and make sure. <laughs> this is the SST. Okay. So, Trey, get a hold of whisker sticks and they will hook you up and whisker sticks i absolutely can't thank you enough for doing that that's absolutely amazing uh you know if you guys don't check them uh don't know them it says uh the winner can send them a message on their website and they will get you taken care of uh whisker stick thank you so much for doing that that's that means a lot to me and it, and it should mean a lot to everybody out there uh that's watching the show so so anyway uh, at the end of the night, make sure you're giving them guys some love. Um, there is, on my Facebook page, there is a, uh, a hat that has a bunch of signatures on it. And Catnapper on Facebook is doing a, uh, they're trying to hit a $2,000 goal. You can pay them through 
You can buy tickets for the hat. That's not this hat. But anyway, you can pay, buy tickets for the raffle um, through the hat from Catnapper. Uh, you can go to my Facebook page. I had shared the post earlier this morning or late last night. I can't remember. But make sure we help them do everything we can. I think it's like five bucks for three tickets. This all goes to um, Heroes Outdoor Therapy. If you don't know what uh, Heroes Outdoor Therapy is, look up Leslie and and help them out. Uh, get a hold of Catnapper. Uh, buy some tickets, even if it's you know just five dollars. It all means a lot to help these people out. Um, you know, they give us the possibility to sit here and talk about this information. Uh, sorry, we got interrupted. Uh, but anyway, make sure you're going and you're you know helping them out as much as we can. They absolutely uh, they fight for our freedom, and if you love this country. Show them some love. Make sure that you're uh, buying some tickets and and just helping them out as much as we can. They need to meet that $2,000 uh, goal, but I want to blow it out of the water, and I want you guys to help me. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll catch you again next Tuesday. If, Like I said, if there is another enough uh, to do another show on this, we will. If not, we will do something else. Um, it's about time to get into bait, and it's just about time to get warm enough to get that boat on the water um, the river get down. I'm going to start doing it, some of these on, on the river uh, in live. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next week. Make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're sharing and hit that